guys get seeing you guys, uh, but not in this type of situation, unfortunately. We do have Hurricane Francine moving uh, toward us. So we do see some heavier rain now moving into, it uh, looks like, Iberia Parish and St. Mary Parish. I really think the flash flooding threat is going to be pretty low at this point. Um, the only exception is going to be St. Mary Parish, Terrebonne, maybe southern parts of Iberia. But uh, this rain we're seeing here is pretty steady. It's not coming down all at one time real heavy, and it's going to be pretty much a steady rain. But still, uh, four or five inches of rain over six hours could lead to some minor flash flooding across areas, but we're not seeing those three to four inch uh, rain hourly totals that can really ramp up the flash flooding in a hurry. As a matter of fact, here's what it looks like. Six hour rainfall totals, not even an inch yet. It looks like in uh, St. Mary Parish, half an inch there in Generette. I think Lafayette West, maybe one to two inches of rain. And then as we go down to the southeast, down in these parishes, still five to six inches of rain. The heaviest rains will be as we see Francine move inland. And then we'll see those outer rain bands move to the north. And we'll see, it looks like once the eye wall comes in, there's we'll some intense rain with that. But everything's moving uh, back to the northwest. And this uh, rain here on the northwestern side is actually weakening some. And it looks like if you live in Jennings, uh, back to the west, you may not see much rain at all from this. Here's what it looks like. Pretty wide eye now. A lot of lightning right there along that western eye wall. And it looks like the strongest part of uh, Francine is on the western side and uh, moving off to the northeast. So I'd pretty much say that it's not going to make landfall in Vermilion Parish at this point. It'd have to move due north. We we'll see that track off to the northeast. This is um, St. Mary Terrebonne Parish. It's going to be very close there uh, near Morgan City maybe making it into Terrebonne Parish and then moving off to the north. If you think back to three years ago uh, to Ida, Ida made landfall uh, down south in New Orleans, so not too far from there. Uh, of course, it was a high end cat four. This is going to be a high end cat one. We think at landfall and you can see these outer rain bands coming in. This is where a lot of the flash flooding is going to be. This is where the tornadoes are going to be over the New Orleans area, maybe in the Mississippi. This right here is some very intense rain and what's going to happen. We're going to see dry air and train into this and it's going to and this band will expand down to the south and could see tornadoes along that. But that should stay east of Acadiana. I really think the tornado threat is going to be very, very low uh, for Acadiana. Is, uh, most of that's going to be off to the east. And then we could see some tornadoes in St. Mary Parish and Terrebonne. Uh, not out of the question Iberia, but I still think that's going to be a pretty a low chance. Velocity here, we see the winds. Uh, hey, Kel, uh, Trevor, can you pixel this? Take a look at the winds real quick down there. This is uh, probably close to flight level winds as the radar beam goes up uh, probably about 10,000 feet. We're looking here. This is not uh, necessarily at the surface because the radar beam goes up. We're hitting high in that uh, cloud 79, 73. Some of this could be ground truth here. We have the eye here. Uh, definitely some very strong winds there on the western eye wall. Uh, but like I said, uh, we have uh, St. Mary Parish here not too far away as it is making its way off to the northeast, 75 mile per hour wind. So looking at hurricane force winds there on the western side of that eye wall. Um, and like I said, this is going to be seven, eight thousand feet up in the atmosphere as that radar beam goes up. Chance of rain looking likely as we go through the rest of the day and then it starts tapering off tonight. I think Western Parish is Jeff Davis, Acadia. You're not going to see much at all. Lafayette Parish, good steady rain at least for the next, um, it looks like I would say seven or eight hours, but not too heavy, but it will be pretty steady. And then as we get through tomorrow, things looking much better as we see things start to dry out. We're going to maintain a north wind as long as it is south of us. Um, uh, we're going to maintain that wind out of the north. And these will get stronger. We could see wind gusts in the heart of Acadiana at about 50 to 70 miles per hour once we get to the afternoon hours. Much lighter totals back to the west. So uh, my backyard faces the north, so I tried to clean up the backyard uh, with that north wind. This is not going to be like Laura or Delta. We had that strong south wind. Delta came in and tore the southern side of my roof completely up uh, with those winds that were gusting 85, 90 miles per hour. So uh, anything coming in from the north with this one with that track down to the south, you can see those winds out of the east and Baton Rouge. The south wind is going to be over the southeastern parts of the state uh, into Mississippi uh, east of the low, but uh, it does look as though we're actually on the good side of this one. Very fortunate because uh, models earlier in the week had it coming right up of Vermilion Parish, right through the heart of Acadiana. And we had that shift off to the east just a little bit. And uh, that's pretty common. It was about a 40 mile shift in two days. And uh, luckily, uh, you know, we didn't see this back near like Charles with the models a few days ago. If that had been the case, maybe it would have been uh, right over us. Wind gust right here. We're looking at some pretty high wind gusts, right? We're starting to see this now in St. Mary Parish. And it looks like uh, down into 
a Terrebonne Parish, some of those winds going up to 40, 50, 21 Lafayette, 31 New Iberia. These will increase too as we go through the afternoon. I still think, like I said, Lafayette, New Iberia, Abbeville, uh, 60 mile per hour wind gusts, not out of the question. And then as we go back to the west, uh, lighter winds, I think uh, rain, Crowley, up into Evangeline Parish, 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. What we may see, and I think this is what we saw at Delta, we may see that dry slot come in as we go through the afternoon and once it gets uh, nearly inland and we may see some of that dry air, air come down to the ground, uh, kind of like a large microburst and those winds may really increase once we see that dry air and train into it after it makes landfall. So these winds, Baton Rouge over to Hammond, New Orleans could be really strong. I think the brunt of the wind will be Baton Rouge, Hammond, uh, New Orleans down in this area. And it's going to make this track here. So it's going to probably move between, I would say, Baton Rouge and Slidell near Hammond as that track takes it up across parts of, it looks like, uh, the northern parts, eastern parts of the state into Mississippi. Uh, it looks like still hurricane warning, and we have all kind of watches and warnings here. Uh, coastal uh, warning, uh, looks like we have that uh, storm surge warning of St. Mary Parish, also down into Terrebonne Parish. Here's the satellite and the radars. We see the rain bands rolling on in. A wider look at this, looking here at the eye, and that track off to the northeast. Um, kind of not a whole lot on the eastern side quite yet. Really don't see much strengthening from here on out as we do have the wind shear coming in uh, from the northwest. Also, some of that dry air is going to try to entrain into this. If this would have really gained strength night before last, you know, it stayed at 65 miles per hour for about 24 hours. If we'd have seen rapid intensification late Monday night, we would probably be looking at a Cat 3 hurricane here, but luckily that didn't happen. That dry air coming out of Mexico and the mid-levels of the atmosphere really kept it from uh, strengthening that much. But the big rain shield, you kind of see how a lot of the rain, usually with a, a hurricane, you see it full all the way around. I think what we're seeing here is some of that upper level wind is coming in and kind of pushing the rain shield more to the east. So on the western side here, on um, the western eye, while there's going to be some heavy rain, but uh, a lot of this is really going to cut off once we get west of Hurricane Francine. Here's what it looks like. This is the uh, infrared satellite image, and we're looking at cloud tops here, cold cloud tops. You don't have the classic eye with this, and it's probably not going to form an eye as uh, it's going to come inland here. Uh, but if this had a few more days to develop, if it were in the southern Gulf, we'd be looking at some major problems with it getting much stronger. But still, it's going to cause quite a bit of damage over St. Mary Parish, Terrebonne Parish, uh, with sustained winds probably 80 to 90 miles per hour at landfall, and then, then weakening quickly as it moves up into uh, it looks like the eastern parts of the state. This is what we were talking about, the dry air, in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Notice the brown, dark colors here. That's kind of getting entrained into the system, and uh, that's going to... Keep it, keep it from really strengthening before landfall. And you can see these uh, upper level clouds here, how they're kind of expanding off to the east pretty quickly. That's that upper level wind shear. Um, and we kind of had this situation with Laura, uh, think back to 2020. Of course, Laura made landfall over south of Lake Charles. And we had some dry air to the west, and we had a little wind shear near the coast. We thought that might weaken Laura, but it didn't. Uh, it was so strong that it really didn't. Um, succumb to those uh, situations or those circumstances. So it really stayed at 150 miles per hour all the way up to landfall because it was such a strong storm that um, the, the dry air didn't help it. But this is a weaker storm, so it's a little more susceptible to the harsh conditions as the mid-level dry air comes in it and the upper level wind shear. Here's what it looks like the latest National Hurricane Center. Let's see, this is a little after 12. Next update comes out in about 45 minutes. Moving to the northeast at 13. Winds at 90. Pressure 976, and I will say the models, especially the global models, did a very good job of the pressure of this. When it had it uh, between about 970 and 980 um, uh, before landfall, and that's where it is right now. So uh, going back to Sunday, that's when we're starting to see uh, the pressure really drop with the models, and it's uh, pretty much stayed consistent with uh, showing 970 to 980 pressure uh, at this stage, and uh, it looks like it's going to probably and probably level off there. It may come down a little bit, but still, I don't think we see much strengthening as it makes its way up toward uh, St. Mary Parish. Uh, Cat 1 is going to make landfall more than likely as a Cat 1. Um, have to go up to about, I think it's 96 for Cat 2. And then Jackson's going to be in line with this, a tropical storm. Could be a lot of damage right along this path as uh, winds is still 45 miles per hour here and a lot of rain, five to six, maybe seven inches of rain as it makes its way up across the eastern parts of the state in southern Mississippi. And then that tornado risk is going to be over to the Florida Panhandle, Alabama, Mississippi 
and it's still the eastern parts of the state. Here's what it looks like with the latest models, still showing uh, the track where we think it's going. Black line, National Hurricane Center line, and uh, we see all the models uh, between that and New Orleans. Uh, so uh, I think most of Acadiana not seeing the brunt of this, but we're still going to see impacts from it. Here's what it looks like on Future Track. And the Future Track is way east. I don't think it's going to be this far east, but you can see um, it takes it all the way over into Lafouche Parish. You can see that band coming down. That's what I was talking about earlier. There's going to be a band of storm that develops with this as that dry air and trains into it. And uh, this is really looks like something you see in the spring or winter time with an area of low pressure, a cold front trailing. You get tornadoes along this. There could be some tornadoes in this um, as it makes its way up into Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. But for us on the western side, the rain really cuts off, so we're looking much better here as we head through tonight. Things shouldn't look much better, 9, 10 o'clock, and we could see some wraparound moisture come in as we go through tomorrow. Rain chance is very low, and then we're back to pretty typical September weather, which uh, hasn't been too bad over the last um, you know, week or so. We haven't seen 90 in a week, and we had that nice weather over the weekend, but it's going to be back here soon. A wind gust here, we're looking uh, 27. Uh, 33 Lafayette, that's at noon, but you can see as we go through 530, this does come up quite a bit, 39. Now, this is going to be strong enough to uh, blow over, you know, maybe some small trees. The ground's saturated, so it doesn't take as much uh, to blow trees over. Definitely limbs down. Uh, I don't think it's going to be quite enough to loosen any shingles unless you already have loose shingles. And it looks like the stronger winds right along the coast there in Vermilion Parish. And then we're looking at 59 mile per hour wind gusts possible in a Franklin. It really depends on the track. Now, what may happen if it moves further to the south, the storm surge is not going to be near as bad in St. Mary Parish because there'll be a north wind, so the water will be going out. Uh, but if it comes up closer to um, Marsh Island, and makes landfall near Franklin, then Morgan City, that area is going to see a lot of storm surge. So five, 10 mile deviation here could be huge with the storm surge across St. Mary Parish and how much storm surge these areas see. Uh, so we'll be watching that to see you know, how that plays out. Still a 54 mile per hour wind gust in Baton Rouge at 1130. And then as we go through, it looks like a tomorrow morning winds here. Uh, 15 to 20. At least we'll have a nice breeze tomorrow. That may help out some. GRAF, it takes it way east, so it's definitely going to push those winds uh, much further off to the east. And then the rainfall totals, we've really brought this down. I think uh, Lafayette, Abbeville, and our coastal city, one to two inches of rain. And that's going to be over four or five hours, so we're not looking at uh, much of a flash flooding threat with that. And then much lighter amounts uh, back to the west. Very good to see that Lake Charles is spared from this one, considering what they went through uh, four years ago with Laura, and then 2.7 Baton Rouge, 3.81. I still think some of these areas down across St. Mary Parish may see six to seven inches of rain. Good news is with this one, it's moving pretty fast. It's not a slow moving system. Think back to Hurricane Sally back in 2020 that hit uh, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Pensacola. It was moving at two miles per hour, so it dumped 25 inches of rain. This one's moving 12 to 15 miles per hour, so we're not going to deal with that extensive flash flooding like they saw back in 2020 there. But, um, you know, some areas, uh, especially over St. Mary Parish, may see some brief flash flooding. Storm surge forecast, I was just talking about this. Uh, you can see here four to six, definitely possible along the coast there of it looks like uh, Iberia or uh, St. Mary Parish and then much lighter amounts now with that north wind coming in. Uh, it looks like not much of a storm surge over Vermilion, six to eight possible in Morgan City. Really depends on the track. A track here over, I would say, the um, Terrebonne, St. Mary Parish border is going to push that water out in most of St. Mary. But if it comes, like I said, a little further north, and that south wind is going to pile that water up there across parts of St. Mary Parish. So we're watching it closely, but right now it does look as though most of Acadiana, just a windy, rainy day. It's going to get windy later. You're going to hear it outside. If you have time, you can still go out and uh, kind of uh, pick up things that are loose. You don't want your trampoline flying, you know, down the road or, you know, something loose out there flying away in the yard. And that could be the case this afternoon with those uh, north winds. It could be as high as 50 to 60. So let's go back to the news desk. All right, Heath, thanks a lot.